Calling Inspector Marsden by Count Arthur Strong. Read by Count Arthur Strong. Hello, everybody. Thank you for purchasing this superior crime novel, which I spent many hours researching up at the library prior to my commencement, so you wouldn't have to bother. But you won't hear me banging on about that, like some top crime writers do. Frederick Raphael, for example, on Pebble Mill at One. I think it was the same one that Paul Shane sang You've Lost That Lovin' Feeling" by the Righteous Brothers on. Though, don't hold me to that. You know... When I was asked to write the foreword for this immense novella, I don't mind admitting that my first thought was, they've got a bit of a cheek, I've just written the sodden book. However, when they told me what someone else might charge, I decided to accept the honour and do it my bloody self. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy the toils of my labours and that you paid the full proper price for it. Chapter 1 the Man on the Mountain On top of the snow-capped tallest mountain in Tibet, Mount Everest, made famous by Sherpa Van Tensing, Hilary Benn and the um, double glazing firm, sat a motionless cross-legged figure with a big thick beard. If this was a film, it would be like we're seeing it through the eyes of an eagle as it flies about. Unfortunately, though, it's a book so you'll have to do that bit in your head, which I apologise for. Despite the fact that the man was sitting on a glacier, dressed only in a thin, paisley-patterned silk kimono with no socks on, this motionless individual, who I'm deliberately not letting you know who it is yet, you'll have to be patient, felt no cold. In fact, if a doctor, my doctor say for the sake of argument, Dr Baker, had checked him for his pulse, he would probably not have found it and pronounced him dead on the spot. Mind you, he has done that to me before as Dr Baker. Um, I once went to see him for, um, to put it delicately, a digestive problem, and he pronounced me dead. Uh, well, mind you, I had fallen asleep um, in there because I'd been up all night with trap wind. Um, it seems he took the pulse of the arm of the chair. When I woke up, there was a paramedic and everything there. But anyway, he's coming up to retirement, so it won't be an issue soon. The eagle, with the cameras for its eyes, soared closer to the stationary figure, eventually coming to rest and perching itself on the man's broad, powerful soldiers. The eagle bird then did a caw, or whatever noise they make, in the man's ear hole. Slowly, the bearded man's eyes opened, and inside his head the eagle spoke to him without moving its lips, or beak if you want to spit hairs. It is time. The man imperceptibly nodded his head, and the eagle did another two cause and flew off, possibly to steal a lamb while the shepherd was asleep, I don't know. The tall, powerful man stood up and turned a bit, just enough to make you think, who does that remind me of? He then strode purposely off down the mountain to the cave he'd been living in since the last book, approximately a year ago, depending on when this comes out. <laughs> 